Okay, welcome all to the Tuesday, January 24th Council Finance Investment and Parking Committee meeting. Uh, first on the agenda is approval of the August 23rd, 2022 minutes. Do I have a motion? Sure. Let's do it. Okay. I, um, yeah, and I mean, I didn't see any inconsistencies. I don't know that I actually approved. Okay, I have, I do want to say something about this. How, it's not, I mean, if we get this right before the meeting, we don't really have time to look at the minutes. And I know this is just a committee meeting, but have, I am you, having, yeah, I, you I have, am, oh, good, good. I was just going to say, I am, uh, you know, just a little concerned that we often get these um, meeting minutes just right before the meeting um, and then the, the agenda. And when, so, when would you, so the plan, we let everybody kind of until Friday put stuff on the agenda our plan is to send it out monday if that's enough time for you guys to look at it at yes. tuesday yeah that's playing on forward again this is kind of slammed together we'll it together yep we're gonna have a no meeting problem. let's pull let's put together and then i yeah um back to back so that's on me but yeah so plan to have the agenda and the uh any attachments that we send them out early and the minutes on monday okay i um haven't actually had a chance to look at the meeting minutes because i just got them and so i'm just gonna look I mean, I don't see any inconsistencies, but if I were to see inconsistencies, I could always make an amendment at a future meeting, right? You can make an amendment okay. at the next meeting. Then so moved, uh, meeting minutes approved. And next on the agenda is uh, to elect the chair and vice chair. Um, I'm happy to keep chairing this year as long as somebody else would be happy to take it next year, but... Um, uh is it okay if i nominate myself for chair or yes. okay so yeah, much, yeah good how about how much fun it would be if i nominate myself for chair yeah there we go oh boy i mean <laughs> i know and yeah. i'm thinking about this like it really would be better i mean can we ever defer let's, uh, yes. let's just say that jennifer okay. is the chair and i will be the co-chair for 2023 Okay, let's do that then. So we've got the chair is myself and then Michael is the vice chair. Moving right along, I'll send an email to Lori um, uh, with that information. Next on the agenda is the mayor's salary review. And we have for that Charlotte Nelson presenting. And Charlotte, you're able to share your screen if you have the documents. Okay. I have too many things open right now. I know that's that's where I, we kind of ran right in this meeting, full bore, a lot of work. So it, um, three screens. It says I'm disabled. I can't share. No, oh, I checked that. Let me see. Okay, let me see if I remember how to do everything here. I'm off camera for a quick minute, but I'm still listening in, and I can still see the the screen. Bear with me. And we're good. Should be good. Let me know, Charlotte. Yep. Okay. Okay, are you looking at this? Uh, the mayor's salary survey 2023. Okay, so I completed, for BMC, I've completed the 2023 survey on the mayor's salary, which is um, done every four years. And I looked at, I'm gonna just go through this and then I'll send, send you, share my spreadsheets with you. So I looked at 20 different cities and um, using those 20 cities, the mayor, uh, and I only use strong mayors, so to match up with us, but the salary is 39 or 34.9% below the average and 33.83% below the median using all those cities. So then I looked at it using our population and 100% up and 100% down. And doing it that way, his salary is 29.3% below the average and 26.7% below the median. 
do you do 100% below our population? That would be a city of no people. Um, here, I'll show you. That's a good question. Are you talking for population? This is it. So the, yeah, the comment is like, how do you go 100% below? How would, you know, be zero, you know, so. Oh, you, you, so. It's just weird, yeah, it's just weird how it's stated. When we Maybe it's the way I'm, say, I'm saying it, but I went, yeah. So I as low as you can, yeah. So Tequila is, um, if Tequila is the 100% population, Bremerton would be 200%. Mm hmm I mean, I guess I'm kind of seeing it, but it doesn't make sense the way that it's the way it is. Oh. So the 100 percent above so, below. So you go 45,000, double it to 90, and then you go 45,000, 100 percent below. You can go all the way to zero with a comparable city. You'll never hit zero. You'll hit on this if you look at this. You'll hit. Oh, so I should have probably said 12, 180 is the lowest. But you grab everybody below and 100 percent higher. You know. 100%. If I did it 100 percent below, it looks like I probably did it 50 percent below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not as far. So yeah, sorry. I'll I'll change that if it goes any further. Sorry about that. So what's the recommendation? Yeah, let's see. The previous. Oh, you have a presentation. I'll be quiet now. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. So and then I looked at how other cities set their mayor's salaries, and 40 percent of the cities we looked at do an independent, they just call it different things. It's either independent salary commission or citizen salary commission. 15% give them annual costs of livings and 35% of them do the same as they do for non-represented. Um, city services, I looked at how many of them were full, full service cities like we are and how many were not and 65% are not full service and 35 percent are come on down and down and then i looked at um the mayor the current mayor uh has only received one pay increase since he was elected in 2018 and that was in 2020 when he received a 3.64 percent increase i thought we did something like a seven percent increase uh -huh. Not not since he's been in. It might be so before. I don't think we I did. Mean, he and I got elected at the same time. So, but again, maybe maybe the maybe, maybe the, it was Lent. It, she well, that was a salary reduction. Even oh, yes. So this is the history back to two thousand eight. Because there's a population decrease. Uh, this that one. seems pretty high for even this such a small a 200 i mean i don't know was there a population decrease in 2014 really i i don't believe it had anything to do with the population okay that was yeah that was it was anyways it, it well a little bit was was a little recession related and um okay. you know, it's just there were some people in the news that wanted all top salaries in the city reduced and so okay political yeah okay, so that's um that part and then i'm going to show you the spreadsheets that came so up it was reduced in 2014 and it's only been increased by less than four percent since uh it'd be this yeah so really okay okay all right so that's one reason why it's so much lower yeah. mm -hmm. And then these are the spreadsheets that I put together, and these are the 20 city, 21 cities, sorry, that I use. And this is where it shows it's 34.9% below the average and 33.83% below the median. And then this is using, you know, the, the cities that are closer in size, I'll put it that way. And under this one, it's 29.3% below the average and 26.7% below the median. And that, these are just copies of the population and then the assessed valuation of the cities. And so are we going to elect an independent 
council to review this? You probably couldn't hear me. Are we going to elect or do like an ad hoc committee to? It's us. If we yes. are the ad hoc committee that decides the salary of the mayor, the finance committee. Yes. No. So, council, right? City council. City so, council. Okay. Yeah. And per BMC, the way the BMC is now is that you do the salary survey every four years and that the mayor's, if you increase the mayor's salary, it won't increase until next year. Uh, Charlotte, can you put the slide back up that had the, the years and the two percents and the three point whatever percent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, Jennifer, for a little history, when we last did that three point something, that's when um, Council Member Younger said, like, let's just let's build something that this is gets a regular review, right? Because otherwise, it's this weird situation where like the mayor has to ask for somebody to look at it and things like that. So the review process is now every four years. Yeah. So we're hitting the four year review. It, also, it actually is kind of nice. It also falls in the middle of uh of a term right so mayor wheeler was re-elected you know and now it's okay suggested and anyways i mean it's not really um performance based but yeah charlotte can you put that slide back up though the the one that oh had, i stopped sharing sorry i forgot yeah the one that had the years i'm just curious as a fact if we were to look at that two percent um you know when it was when it happened if we had just kept doing that i'm just wondering how many years that is one two three So it's 12 years had we just been keeping 2% two, two can you send me Matthew on the, on the we'll call. See what we can do all through me Karen myself and Sherry we'll see if we can come up with a number I mean I know it would sort of compound but even if we just said let's see you know I don't know 2% of 10 what what's 2% of 10,000 200 Two percent of ten thousand would be uh, two, two hundred, right? Yeah. So two percent. Wait, did you say two percent of ten thousand? Yeah, that's two hundred. Yeah. So. Then are we taking a recommendation back to council on what we should do for an increase? The yeah the the proposal the proposal that's coming forward because this is requested to be done in 2023. We've done the work. Uh, the ordinance says it's to be effective in 2024. Um, with with it being done, we're asking council because of the you know how far apart looking at the comps are. We'd like to go to council to bring it to full council have this discussion. And then do we do we want to make this make this available sooner than later where we don't increase the increase the gap and deal with it now and still wait until till budget in 24. That's the that's the request. Um I just don't feel comfortable making a recommendation in particular about this. So the, the request so, is gonna to have to go to full council anyway. It's been, yeah. it's been asked to go there in, in 20, 2023. So we're okay. bringing the finance committee to bring you for our members like we kind of want to do anyway. It's yep. going to go forward to study session. So the Perfect. full council can look at it because it's part the of the same presentation. Codified. Everybody's gonna see it. Yes, it's been codified that this had to be done by HR. We'd like to make a recommendation on future years every four years, how it's done. Is it through a commission? Is it, a, we'd like personally internally, I think our recommendation would be it follows our managed professional plan, whatever you know, the raises that we get falls the mayor's tied tied to tied to our uh, the contract with Teamsters. Um, some that makes the sense CPI. to me. So. Um, but also, it it also makes sense to me that the mayor is reviewed, kind of in the same way that we are with an independent council. So, and so those are the three. Yeah, that'd be the recommendation. Is there an independent body that reviews the sal a salary commission is put today, just like the council? There's there's options, and and then the council can set how it's reviewed, and not just put on each our shoulders. Let's give the mayor what the council got. Yeah, five dollars. Five dollars. I get, I get actually you got two. You got two because we had to do a correction. Oh. <laughs> if you look at the percentage. Just the same. So yeah, I'll take it. I'll what take is it. the what is the what is the Charlotte? What do you feel the uh, percentage? Uh, that you're based on all your research you're recommending? 
I would say at least get him to the average or the median. And, and but give me that in a percentage or in a dollar. Oh, um, so it, well, just to get him to the median, it would be a 26.7% increase. And that's using the smaller group of cities that are closer in population. Yeah. I mean, that just what is the salary now? It was 45,000, 44,829. I can't remember exactly what it was. I missed the first part of that. What is his salary now? His salary okay. now was at 44,829. Can you remind me how much that was? It's uh, monthly, it's 9,537. Oh, I was looking at the annual one. Okay. Did I have, did I have it? Anyway? It was. It was listed oh. with the other media. Okay. Uh, okay. So, and, and the other thing to look at is on this one, he is the lowest paid mayor. Um, and on the first one, the only mayor that makes less than him, the big one, am I still sharing? No. No, you're not sharing. Um, let's see it. Show us again. Okay. And Marjorie, your question earlier, if we just increase by 2% per year, it's about $31,000 Delta. We have 146.279 instead of 114.444. What's the what's the cola that uh, the teams? I mean, do the teamsters have a cola? Yeah, we had th uh, three and a half, and then two and a half. And two and a half this year. Mike, that thirty one k. Yeah, thirty one eight, thirty five. And a percentage would that be compared to this twenty six? Let's just take a look. Good question. I just, I mean, to walk out there and say that the mayor should get about a thirty percent increase, or even a twenty five percent increase. Just twenty twenty seven point eight. Really? I don't know how well that would go over, but it does make sense with the data you're providing. I mean, I get it. He does work very hard. Our city has special needs compared to other cities, right? So in the only city, this is kind of sad. The only city that makes less than him out of all of these is Edgewood. Yeah. That is pretty sad. I don't hear, I've never heard of Edgewood. Yeah, there's yeah. a reason, there's a reason. <laughs> I know Edgewood and I know who's there and they have contract contract employees. Okay. They, I think we finally got a full-time finance person. So, to me, this is like a, how do you eat an elephant, right? Yeah. If, I just feel like if we go out there and just like 26.7, it's just going to, it's going to, it's going to be in the newspaper. It's going to be, okay. and I kind of think that if we take this approach that just said, you know, everybody on staff has been getting these regular increases. If we retroactively, you know, Put those and we wouldn't go back like he's not going to get past wages yeah but that could be a case for implementing it sooner and just you know we've kind of you know dropped maybe the ball on this we could and so but so but so go ahead whoever's trying to talk yeah sorry i was just going to say before it you know we go out and it hits the paper and everything isn't this is this something we could talk about with the group in exempt? Yeah, because it's a. Um, I think that's a very appropriate. Yes. Staff, it's a. It's an HR, and and just so I just need to ask, like none of you are under duress. The mayor's not standing in the room with you. No, I only did it this early in the year because I have a lot coming up this year. I have um, two collective bargaining agreements to get done. I'm supposed to get the soup. I, you don't want to hear all my issues, but, but I'm busy. Of course we do. Yeah. It's important. <laughs> no, you're, no, it's valid. Yeah. So getting it out early is good. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> and I, to me, there's there's two issues here. Is one, you know, I, I mean, I think Eric's idea was you get it, you build it into the budget. So let's just say that we do this let's say roughly this 26, 25% increase, what does that actually look like to the budget? What's the total dollar amount? 26% of 45 would be roughly 12,000, right? No, it'd be, it'd be no, 26, 25% of, he makes roughly a hundred. So it would be like- Oh, did I see 45? Oh, was that the population? Okay, that makes way it's more It's going to come up. It's going to be around 30, around 30, $29,000, $30,000. But yeah. really, in the big picture, that's yeah. not. No, you have your excess fund balance that you guys balance the budget with. That Yeah, it just comes out of general fund. Yeah. 
maybe a little bit less than this. I don't know where we ended now. I think it was 17.2, 17.3% fund balance, something like that, Karen. All right. That is definitely a topic for all of council, as far as I'm concerned. I could see this being an exempt session. Thank you for that recommendation. Um, first, and then I just feel a lot more comfortable asking the whole council. I don't have a recommendation. Michael, do you have a recommendation for? I, I No, I, I mean, I, I like I said, this number gives me a little sticker shock. I would love to see some, or and, and I can even ask these questions, you know, can you show me, this is for a presentation for a study session. Can you show me, um, you know, it can be sanitized. Can you show me uh, salaries of department heads and uh, where the mayor fits in on the department head schedule? I can uh, show you like, that right uh, now. Yeah, that'd be great. And just, just like we do with other committees. And then I really like this idea of telling the story, well, had we just built in, had, well, like what would the mayor's salary be if he got the same raises as other, every other uh, department head. It, we, you know, we can work that out and figure out what our colas were each year. So, yeah. and if I get to a place where the story is um, that um, all like these other methods, you know, if we make him higher paid than the highest director, he's, you know, it's a huge increase. If we get him paid, you know, what colas or whatever, you know, uh, annual raises would have been, he'd be up here. Like the affordable way out is to make him a median income mayor in the region. So, mm -hmm. okay, I'm almost there. Okay. I think he's going to fit somewhere toward the middle of the bottom of the directors, if I'm guessing right. I'm just looking at the numbers, but. Okay. So, no, he's actually. You guys are going to be shocked. Uh oh. Um, Which way? Okay. Make sure I'm in the. Oh, I got to get in the right ear. Right. Okay. I'm going to share. Okay. So if he were on this pay schedule, he would fit, would be in between here. I'm, on uh, band four, assistant city attorney, yes. right seven. <laughs> That's where he's at now. That would be where he's at. Asset manager, now. okay. Yep. So if you your first director or your um, is twenty right here, and the rest of the directors are above that. And where where would he fit in with your twenty six point seven percent? So let me do the math. Sorry, I know, but to me, it's about like you know fitting it into the pot. I I like to present things as like it's it's the no brainer or the smart the smart way to do it. So I just don't want to come in saying, oh, the mayor's staff thinks the mayor should get a thirty percent pay raise. Yeah, <laughs> so that's, that's what makes it awkward. That's what makes this a little awkward instead of having an independent commission. That's why we want to set something up that how this flows and it's not yeah. done. Yeah. internally it should follow like I, said, I just just the more i think about it the more i like the process that we have for our raises because then it doesn't look like there's any then because so there's always politics with the mayor with the administration and city council and to have an outside group make a recommendation to city council feels cleaner to me yeah i would love to ask eric his input on that to know the, the history of how we even got to where we're at. Oh, he'd love to just have a city manager. I know, I, I so would I. <laughs> so he would go, like, he'd be $40 less than this with 26% right here, if you guys can see. So he'd be below all the directors still. He's, he'd be with the parks director. Yeah, <laughs> just, okay, sorry, I'm laughing, so. Uh, all right. hey, it would just, be interesting to see a wage study of other cities in the same way, right? Like how do other cities at that median, at the 0% median, you know, 0% average right around there, what is it like to compare them to their department heads, you know? 
And I don't, I don't know if we. I don't want to open that can of worms. Yeah, I, I get, okay. yeah. I'm rabbit holing then. Is that what you're saying? I can tell you mo most mayors are not the top paid official in, in the city. There, it's going to be something similar. They might be above a little bit, but they're it's, it's not the top. Paid that's paid. Okay. Uh, that are like that, but we, we don't. Yes. So the goal is not to make him the top paid, and I think that's an important thing to say. And in fact, if we can say this raise will still put him below all of his direct reports um mm -hmm. you know uh but it's it's different too right like every our directors are subject matter experts in their departments you know and the mayors are just elected yahoos so you know mm -hmm. anybody can do it so speaking of yahoos yeah <laughs> we were, <laughs> no we, i mean like you know we do i mean we know we never know who's going to be the mayor next mm -hmm. i mean that's a very valid point we have a very yeah. um knowledgeable mayor right now when it comes to uh, a lot of different areas but yeah you never know who you're going to get elected thank you for pointing that out um where do we go I, from here michael oh go ahead charlotte i'm sorry i just want to make one quick point we are actually the median in the population of the cities i used we are right okay. in the so you're saying median but lowest paid yes that's what mm -hmm. i'm saying so we're the median mm -hmm. but not, okay well then okay i guess maybe i'm going to save my questions for later because what i have here is um tell me the two differences that you used you had 34.9 percent below average 33.83 percent below median but that was not based on population that was based on full service cities all cities um all cities all 21 cities yeah but i mean as far as cities goes we're a pretty robust city right because we do our own Full service yeah uh, you know we have a we have a freaking watershed we i mean we have nuclear reactors operating in our shoreline like we this is a complex city sort of you know uh, it's very hard it's very hard to compost based on av and population with the complexity of our government yeah so the, the most complex city in, in the and one in the state and uh, so to even state. get to even get the mayor to median is is probably still i mean nobody i think runs for office to get rich so um all right i just think you know that the key is how we present this I, you know you got this is what i always say you know and um you know, it, it, it's a little bit like housekeeping. You know, one thing I wanted to ask when uh, Charlotte, maybe you'd be the person, but when when the Citizens Commission does do like council salaries, do you present them with this kind of information? Is there, okay. Yeah, right. exact same thing. Great. So. Um, so the path forward, it looks like we're gonna do an exempt session. Do we know when that's gonna be? Is that gonna be like, obviously not tomorrow. Um, or will right? So well, maybe ideally we try to put on the next cycle to bring mm -hmm. forward. We got to talk to Kylie first, see if it's something that we can exactly. do, make sure it can go to exempt. Okay. Um, but yeah, it'd be next cycle. So that's one chunk of it, right? Like let's, and then the other piece is the justification to do it early yeah. or to do it to do it now. Um, yes, it, it it would time out, but there is no, there's no. I need to hear a reason why it makes sense to um enact this raise now or at the six month part of the year or something like that and it's not we're not really still talking a huge amount of money um but we you know we could use the idea that you know that he hasn't had anything you know but and that, and that was kind of our that was that was what we were looking at is the mayor's position has not been adjusted and because the discrepancy that we identified is so significant to deal with it sooner than later, because that gap is so is it, it's so out of out of range um, with the comps, nearly being the lowest paid mayor in the state of Washington as a uh, that doesn't make sense. So to deal with something that the city has let go go on and on. Right? Guy has to walk to work. It's a yeah. shame. <laughs> <laughs> We can have he that walks in. everywhere around town. Can't even right. Uber. I told him I walked to I walked to work once. All right. It's uh, also the only position in the city that is not looked at annually. Yeah. So we do need to create a process. Um, 
Uh, Michael, I don't think we have a great recommendation, but I like how you sussed it out between justification to increase, but also why do we do it now versus later? We talked about the election cycle. So, um, and Mike, you're going to go to Kylie and see if we can get this on the, um, Charlotte or myself. Yeah. I have a session, and that'll be in a couple of weeks, maybe if all goes well, but it'll yeah. more, more will be revealed or the same will be revealed really, uh, in the future. No, um, thank you. Our, are we okay to go ahead and move on to the next topic? I know that um, I, I want to honor. Did you have any other questions, Michael? Can I just offer one suggestion? Mm -hmm. you know, Mike, you know the graph you guys do for water utility rates? Mm -hmm. That shows like cities and stuff. Sure. I feel like if you could take some of those uh, numbers, Charlotte, that, that, were, that were very numerical and just kind of make them, you know, cities and then, you know, you know, we boast like, hey, our water bills are the cheapest. And I just feel like those really help us take so in. We can show our mayors the cheapest too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll I ask can try to do it with your guys, with Mike's help. Maybe. Yeah, we can put something yeah. together that's graphically representative of what we see. So, yeah. okay. so no, right. I think it will show, it will show that in, a, in a, a, a good way, or at least support what we're trying to present. So if we, if we discuss this in a study section, I think we can, we can, I think, well, I guess we have to, we should, there's no reason we shouldn't be able to do it. I mean, once his salary is changed, it's, you know, it's public information. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not talking about his performance though. I don't know. So if- Yeah, that's what we got to talk to Kylie and him being elected is a little different. So yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. All right, awesome. I have no more questions. Thank you very much. Good suggestions, good feedback. Um, so we're going to move right along. Uh, to the last agenda item, which is the investment report. Sherry Jackson, Assistant Director of Financial Services, is here with us today to present. Hello. Hello. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I did a little summary. I did these. This is just info only for the for the council. We're not asking for anything. There's no due policy. We just want to share where we're at. So. Oh, thank you, Charlotte. Right. Bye. I did never say goodbye to her. Oh, is it not? It's yeah, it's a cash investment summary, Sh Sherry. Oh, it does it different than Teams, and it's not like yeah. highlighted. <laughs> oh, I don't know which screen I'm sharing. Okay, so we'll jump right in. So today I'm going to present to you uh, our year-end balances for investments and in our um, cash uh, at the year end for our core portfolio, which Mike can provide additional information on what core means versus uh, the LGIP. Um, it, for with the government portfolio advisors, commonly known as GPA, totaled 43.336 million. This is an increase uh, from the prior year end of 30 million. Uh, if you will recall, back in June of 22, we increased the investment um, amount that was going to be held at the core. And so, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, the core portfolio is where we have our um, our bonds and stuff mm -hmm. that is longer term and less liquid. Yep. Yeah, okay. that's what, exactly right. Okay, great. All right, and then the breakdown of the portfolio that is held at GPA is 68% in US Treasury, 30% in agency, and 2% in municipal, which uh, is Pierce County School District. Just thought I'd throw, um, can point that one. Uh, we also have investments held at LGIP, um, they're approximately 46 million at the end of uh, 22. This is a small increase from uh, the prior years of 44. Uh, and these funds are near-term li liquidity. Money can be accessed at, at any time. So we do keep most of our money here. And as I need to, um, for our payables and such, we'll make transfers as needed. And then any excess, we put it right back into LGIP. The final balance I wanted to go over is our general checking account, and it was about 2.3 million. And of course, the purpose of this checking account is to pay our payroll and our vendor claims on a normal cycle. Are there any questions? Can I? Um, how, what did our investments yield? Oh, that is a great question. Mike? <laughs> Good question. I had to pull the report and see the actual dollar amount. Most of that because, stuff didn't. Yeah, our, all our average, goofy, but... Yeah. So on the on the core, the core is trading about just over two percent. 
just over two percent on the total. At, you know, you saw the, the dollar amount where we're at now at forty six million. So we can get the dollar amount where we're pulling back, which is actually decent compared to last uh, yeah. you know ten years where it dropped down to 0.16, 0.25. Currently, the market on two to two to three year bond is almost four percent, a little over four percent. So, market's looking, you know, at least on the investing side, looks good. On the borrowing side, not so much for us. But uh, and then the LGIP, we can see what the return in there. That's a, they they do the average daily rate of the market on the LGIP. And that what last time I looked, and Sherry looks at it every day. Um, it was at two and a half, almost three, but it, it's more volatile. So. Well, so it's, cool. it's a mutual yes, fund. Interest rates go up. Are some of the rates on some of our investments going up? No, so what? So we're locked in. Well, in the in the LJP, yes. So the LJP is like a mutual fund; it's moving all the time. So we get the benefit of up, going up, and we the negative side of going down. We don't like to keep as much money in the LJP right now. We have a, a good amount of cash there because we're watching the market and just seeing what's happening. So on the bonds and our core, we're locked in. We don't short. We don't short any of our bonds. I don't pull it out early. So we have opportunity cost. If I was a private business, we'd have a pretty significant uh, loss. Uh, on our investments because we have a you know old bonds at 1.9 that could have been traded at four, so we're probably about a half million dollar book loss, which the Bremer City doesn't mean anything. It it goes on the the financial statements, but it's not it's not materialized. Um, private market, the our shareholders would be like, hey, you should have shorted, you should have, you know done some things, and we did do that. We had some tactics to be short. We saw some of this coming, but we were tied into some of that early market, not anticipating the Fed rate, some of the Fed hikes two years ago. Um, but once we knew kind of what was what it was looking, we got as soon as we got out, we we held held IGB, LGIP a little higher, and then started grabbing some of those higher interest earnings. And we've been pretty good with the last probably five or six investments, and we're sitting kind of right now on average. So, and that's where we work with GPA. They're our strategists, and then we approve everything. But and then everybody's in that same situation. Um, anybody that had two to five year bonds, they're just on their books. It, it's it's going to show in that negative that loss. So. Right, and but cash wise, we can get that for the next meeting. Tell you how much we're earning actually in interest. That's the number I care about. I wonder how much more money is actually coming into Bremerton from our investments. So that's not a good way to grab it right now. Sherry, I like your chair. I know gaming chair. Best best gift ever, man. I I saw that today. Is Is that new, Sherry? It is. Okay, after years. She, you guys yeah. don't know how much this new chair means. I had a very rickety one for a long time, and it <laughs> it was dangerous. One yeah, time, I went yeah. backwards. So that's pretty good. Good and observation, so I, Michael. I saw it earlier, and I said nothing, and I was wondering. I, mean, I can't let some things go. That was good. So, Mike, we had a half million dollar loss in what area? Was that? So I don't want to say loss. I don't want to be telling it loss. What that is, it's not a true loss. Not it's, a true loss because it wasn't it wasn't materialized. So. It's it's not real. So what it is is because I'm locked into a two percent rate right now, and there's a That's four percent rate available. The, bonds the difference of the earning more. in that is what's considered a loss. But okay. you're not. They didn't take money from us. We didn't. We didn't have to pay. We didn't lose money. Um, it's just that opportunity to be at four percent today or whatever the market's trading today. You always are going to have a book gain or loss. So. But yeah, but but basically the culture is we don't want to. You know, this isn't, um, we're not, uh, like you were saying, it was a, if it was a private company, that we would be a little bit more, um, yeah, way more less risk aggressive. Yeah, we'd be, we're, short, we'd be shorting some of our stuff. We wouldn't be buying stuff that has no calls. Um, our, our, our portfolio in the cities is safety, liquidity. Is, yeah, safety, safety, liquidity, then yield. Yield is the last piece of our investment strategy. So that's not where we focus our attention. So got it. Care about is it safe? Can we can we can we liquefy? Do we have enough money to pay our bills? And at the end of the day, if we're earning money on it, great. That's what we want. Um, so in our what we can what we can actually go out and buy is very limited as well. And that kind of creates from the structure. Right. Great. And then Sherry, you'll be presenting this at a uh, study session at, at any point in time. No, just, just, FYI, just FYI. FYI. Nope. Okay. The finance committee has full control over over that. You guys can vote on our policies. And yeah, it's actually this is one of the powerful things the finance committee has. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I would really like to. I would really like Eric to to see this as well. He's always got the the best questions. Um, and so, but we'll get a copy of this, and um, we'll get a copy of this uh presentation as well. Correct. It all gets it all gets saved out in the file, and then quarterly we'll br- we're bringing an investment report to you quarterly. So he'll quarterly. So we won't see. We won't. So we'll get another review quarterly. 
Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, Michael, do you have any more questions about our investment report? Okay. Well, we are getting pretty close to five o'clock here. Uh, so uh, welcome, Michael, to the Finance Committee. I'm super excited for you to be here um, with your knowledge and experience. So thank you. Um, and then Eric will be joining us next time, I believe. Uh, is there anything else that we need to discuss for good of the order for the committee? Yes, sir. Are we good with trying to start at 3 p.m. next month? Thank you. That's right. Would 3 p.m. be a good start time for folks? Okay. Eric, and, Eric is giving thumbs up on that. And Perfect. Eric is on board with that. And so I'll get an email out when I uh, to Lori about that. And also for the change of time, do I need to do that for her as well? Probably. Probably be good. Yeah. Okay. She announces the meetings and then... And we're still good with our committee at Zoom format. Is that the plan? Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate that. Do you, do you guys in the department use like Outlook calendar? Yes. I would love if you just put this on your calendar and invited me to it. We can do that. Yeah. I'll set up where I control the meeting instead of coming out of IT. And then we're good on trying to get those um the agenda and the minutes out Sunday. maybe at least a day before we don't need it a week ahead of time but it would be nice at uh, 24 hours if possible rather than just or even just that morning would be better than just right before the meeting starts but we're just throwing stuff together right now so yeah, but you I, know as well as i do sometimes it is a little last minute for this i know you you have a lot of uh things going on so i really appreciate your willingness to do that amidst the chaos of not only running the finance department, but also you do a lot of IT. I just learned that IT is under the finance department. I didn't know that until just recently. So, well, you, yeah, we'll do a we'll do a structural uh, presentation for finance committee to let you know what all is under financial services. Yes, please, that'd be great. We'd for rather be doing financial administrative services because not all financial. So, right, yeah. Thank you very much for that. That'd be great. Like, um, just, anything else? Just, yes, Michael, go right ahead. On the, it, to be honest, for me, it's almost ideal to get minutes and agenda like on Monday morning. Yeah, if I get it a month ago, it's it's just too, it's too far. Yeah. No, 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 no. So but yeah, but Monday that's that's a good amount of uh, review and prep time for me for this kind of meeting. So sounds good. Thank you so much for your willingness for that. All right, um, our next committee meeting is we're going to keep it on the. Um, uh, well, the fourth Tuesday, I shouldn't say the last Tuesday of the month, because this month we have five, right? So we're going to keep it on the fourth Tuesday. The next finance committee meeting is February 28th. We'll be starting at 3 p.m. I'll make sure to make the adjustments on my calendar as well. And thank you all for your time today. We'll see you tomorrow and we'll see you next month. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>